Hello everyone, in the prior session, we defined the terms assets and liabilities in the context of the accounting equation. In this session, we will focus on the equity terms and put the entire accounting equation together. Specifically, we will define equity terms, specifically equity, then the terms under equity, such as revenues, expenses, common stock, and dividend. Understanding each of these terms separately is crucial as how they relate all to the accounting equation. It's important to have a clear and precise understanding of these concepts as these are the elements of the financial statements. Just to recap, assets, liabilities, revenues, expenses, common stock, and dividend. The last four, other than assets and liabilities, are the equity components. We will define each one of them separately and see how they all relate to the accounting equation. Some of them increase the equity, some of them decrease the equity. You need to learn about those. At the end of the recording, we will work a multiple choice question to put all of this concept together. The accounting equation is important. Assets equal liabilities plus equity is the foundation of accounting. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true-false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. If we rearrange the formula equity equal to assets minus liabilities. I know I'm repeating myself, but this is important. Equity represent the ownership interest in a company, essentially what the owners or shareholders would claim after all liabilities are paid off. So the equities, think of this equity is what the owners own in the company. So think about you, think about you on a personal level. If you have assets of $100 and liabilities of 30, if you liquidate your assets and let's assume you got $100 and you paid off your liabilities, what you're left with is $70. So in other words, your net worth, you are worth $70. As an individual, you are worth $70. The same concept, we don't use the word net worth for business. We use, this is for individual, net worth of an individual. For a business, we use equity, shareholders equity or owner's equity. So the owners, the company is worth $70 or your net worth is $70. Another word for equity is net asset. And think of it, this is easy. This is an easy explanation. Net asset is taking assets and subtracting liabilities. Every time you, you hear the word net something, it means you're taking something from that term. Net assets means you're taking your assets, 100 minus your liabilities. That's another definition of equity. Also, equity can be thought of as the residual value. It means what's left to the owners. What's left to the owners is equity. How? What is equity? Take all the assets, pay off all the debt, we have equity. So, so far, we're still talking about equity in general terms. It's the residual interest in the asset of the company and can be broken down into several key components. And this is important. Why this is important? Because we need to know, we need to understand the various components of equity. And specifically, specifically, we're going to say there are four components. There are more than four. There are technically six, but for financial accounting, you need to learn about four components of equity. Actually, there's more than six, but don't worry about this. There are four components of equity we need to be familiar with. I'm going to list them first. We're going to explain each one separately. Then we're going to dive into each one. Revenues, expenses, common stock, and dividend. We're going to define each one of them, each of these elements play a crucial role in shaping the equity of the business. So I'm going to keep working with this example. We have assets of 100, liabilities of 30, since we know the definition of an asset, the definition of liability, equity is 70. If I want to increase 
the the worth of this company if I want to increase the residual value if I want to increase the net asset if I want to increase the net worth if I want to increase the equity of this company what would I do how can a company increase its value I'll tell you how you generate revenues what are revenues it's mean you generate more sales revenues are income generated from the sale of goods or services each company exists for a sole purpose is to grow is to generate more cash how do you grow you generate more revenue for example far hat lectures my company how do I generate more equity how do I grow how does my business grow I have more subscription I have more customers as I have more customers I have more revenue so I provide a service I provide a goods I provide a service Google how do they generate revenues through ads they sell ads Microsoft they sell their software they sell their services Walmart they sell goods your 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 your, your university tuition that's the revenue each business will have a different type of revenues it represents the total amount of money earned by the business from its core activities core activities means what whatever that company does each company will have a different type of revenues for example you yourself you're listening to me most likely you have some sort of a job you work for a company you might have your own business but you work for a company your job is your revenue what does that mean it means the more you work the more revenue you generate the higher is your equity so revenues one component of equity notice here we have equity here and under equity we have those four components we're gonna define them and we just looked at revenues revenues increase your equity think about it on a personal level as you work harder as you work over time as you get a better job your revenue goes up your net worth goes up so higher revenue indicate a successful business leading to growth and retained earning and overall equity now don't worry about retained earnings we're gonna define retained earnings shortly because notice here we're gonna have revenues expenses and dividend and that, that's gonna be under retained earnings but for now let's start at the bottom the four components of equity are revenues expenses dividend and common stock so we defined this component revenues so revenues are good revenues is each company will have a different type of revenues it's what the company does on a day-to-day -day basis to generate more income more revenues and eventually that revenues is in cash for example McDonald's they sell burgers your local barber shop they cut hair that's the revenue each business will have a so, some sort of a revenue you cannot exist without revenue you exist because you have a product a service to provide value to customers again for hat lecture what do I provide I provide educational services that's what I provide and it's gonna help me generate my revenue now we're gonna go from revenues to the second component so revenues is one the second component is expenses what are expenses expenses are cost incurred in the process of earning revenues it will be great if businesses can only generate revenues without incurring expenses without incurring cost but that's not possible to generate your revenues you have to pay for supplies you have to pay for employees you have to pay taxes you have to pay your utilities you have a cost and that cost as you incur that cost it's gonna reduce your assets because when you pay your salaries when you pay salaries when you pay rent when you pay utilities when you pay material for example I have many subs subscriptions that I have to subscribe to to make sure my website is running properly well those are expenses cost now expenses are the second component of equity and you guessed it how do expenses affect equity you guessed it expenses decrease equity because they represent outflow of resources used to generate revenues so kind of you don't like them but they're a necessary evil you cannot run a business without having expenses it will be great if you can but you cannot so effective management of expenses is crucial in maintaining profitability and healthy equity level now here's what we need to know now first formula sub formula if we take our revenues minus our expenses that's gonna give us something called net income or net profit or 
net loss. For example, for the sake of this company, we're going to assume we generated for the sake of this illustration $300 in revenue minus $120 of expenses. We deduct the expenses and this company made a profit of $180. We call this net income and the reason it's net income because we have more revenues, more revenues than expenses. If the opposite is true, if expenses are more than revenues, we have a net loss. So revenues minus, minus expenses, we call this, I'm going to say we have more revenues, net income. So now we defined two components of equity, revenues and expenses. I'm going to move on to the third component of equity, and that's dividend. What is dividend? Dividend are distribution of the company's earnings to its shareholders. Okay, well, what does that mean? Remember in the prior example, I said we generated revenue of 300, our expenses were 120, and the company made a profit or net income of 180. As an owner of the company or the owners of the company, they can take some money out. Let's assume we're going to take $80 for personal use. So the owners of the company, we did not discuss the owners first, but be, uh, think about each company will have owner. Like for example, if it's Farhat Lectures, I can take some money to live from the profit of the company. When I take money out for personal use, it's called dividend. These are distribution of the earnings to the shareholders. Shareholders are the owners of the company. We're going to discuss them in a moment. They are usually paid out in cash or additional shares of stocks, just in cash. That's fine. Equity. What's the relationship between dividend and equity? As you take money out of the business, the equity of the business will go down. Now, my equity, my personal equity will go up as the owner, but the equity of the business is decreased. Why? Because the company will have less cash. If I'm taking 80 out, what's left, for, what's left as profit in the company is $100. Now, there is a term for that $100. So if I made a profit of 180, if my net income was 180, I deducted the dividend. Let, let, let me do it this way. I'm going to put 80 then. If I made a profit of 180, of this profit, I took out 80 in dividend because I took it out for personal use. What's left from the profit is $100. We call this $100. What I kept is... Guess what? Very illustrative name, retained earnings. It's what, what I kept, retained earnings. So what is retained earnings? Retained earnings is revenue minus expenses, which is net income, minus the dividend, minus the dividend, all these three together. So net income minus the dividend is retained earnings. And retained earnings is a major component of equity. Notice here, retained earnings equity part of equity is retained earnings this is one major component of equity but this component is can be divided into three accounts revenues minus expenses minus dividend so it's revenues expenses and dividend are retained earnings all of them are part of equity so equity is the umbrella under equity we have retained earnings and under retained earnings we have revenues expenses and dividend that's important while paying dividend can attract investors and provide a return to their investments, it also reduces the amount of retained earning that can be reinvested in the business. Now, why would the business pay part of their profit? For one thing, maybe the owners, they need the money to live off. If, that's, if your business is your only job, you need to take money out to live. Two, if you want to attract investors, which we'll talk about this on the next slide, if you want to attract people to invest in your company, you want to show them that you are paying paying them part of the profit to attract them, to induce them, to convince them to invest in you. Okay, so, so far we defined three terms, the three terms, revenues, expenses, and dividend, and we said all, all of these are equity, but specifically revenues, expenses, and dividend, they can be summarized into retained earnings, and I showed you how. The fourth component is common stock. So notice now we're going to discuss this term, common stock. What is common stock? Well, think about a company. When a company starts, you need investors. You need shareholders. Uh, you need, what else? What, what else do we call them? Investors, shareholders, stockholders. Those are all the same thing. Investors, shareholders, stockholders. 
those are the people that provide money to start the business. They own the business. So common stock represent the shares of ownership in a corporation. For a company to start, you need someone to invest in the company to increase the company. Think about it. Companies don't exist without someone making an investment. Even if you want to start the business today, what do you do? You take, for example, $5,000 from your personal account. You open a business account and you'd say, I'm going to transfer this $5,000 to my business account to start my business. This $5,000 is your ownership, represent your ownership. When a company issues stocks, it sells ownership to investors in exchange for capital. So let me show you a picture. So it's an individual. I'm really lousy at drawing. So this individual, they will transfer $5,000 to a new business. New business to start the business. So they transfer the money to the new business. What would the business give them in return? The business in return, they will give you ownership. They will give you, and that ownership is represented in common stock. They will give you ownership in the company. You give them the money, they give you ownership in the company. They give you stocks in the company. So when the owner invests in the business, the equity of the business, obviously it has to go up because you're transferring $5,000 to the business. Now your equity as an individual, as an individual, your equity goes down, but we don't care about the individual. We care about the business. So the common stock increases equity. Why? Because you are contributing money to the business. Now, why would someone contribute money to the business? Because they believe in the business. They believe this business, the reason they do so, because they believe this business will be making a profit, remember? And when they make a profit, they're going to get some of that profit. They will share in the profit. That's why you invest in a company. But to invest, you have to put some money. It's called common stock. So the funds raised from issuing common stock contribute directly to equity. It, in, it, it, it increases equity. This capital can be used to finance operation, invest a new project, and grow the business. The company needs money to operate, to grow, to grow. Now, common stock is called contributed capital. What is contributed capital? As the word suggests, capital means money. It means money provided by the investors contributed this is what contributed capital contributed to the business so equity we can say equity is composed of two com main component retained earnings and contributed capital what is retained earnings retained earnings is what the company keeps after generating the profit and paying the investors and contributed capital is what the investors invested in the company so contributed capital is the equivalent of common stock and retained earnings is revenues minus expenses minus dividend. So common shareholders typically have voting power and would receive dividend. May receive dividend when the company pays out dividend, it pays dividend to the common shareholders. So this is the big picture of equity. To summarize it, remember, equity has four components. Common stock, uh, let's do it the way I did it, revenues, expenses, dividend, and common stock. When we take, when we compute revenues minus expenses, we get to something called net income or a net loss. We're going to assume it's net income. From net income, the company might pay out dividend. When they pay out dividend, net income minus dividend, we call it retained earnings. So revenue minus expenses minus dividend equal to retained earning. And that's one major component of the equity of the business. The second component is common stock which is contributed capital. So you need to know the definition of each term. You need to know how each term influence equity. Revenues and common stock increases equity. Dividend and expenses reduces equity. And this is basically a complete definition of equity. Now, there are other accounts that influence equity, but it's beyond the scope of financial accounting. We'll cover those in intermediate accounting. We cover some of them in advanced accounting on farhatlectures.com. But this is all what you need to know for now about equity. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. A retail company issues, it means sold, common stock worth 20000 How does this transaction affect the company's balance sheet? Because, you know, remember the accountant equation is on the balance sheet. So if this is the company, the company issues, it gave away 
$20,000 worth of common stock. Obviously, what did the company receive in return? They received cash of 20,000 from someone, from the investors. The investors paid 20,000, the company issued common stock. How would that influence the balance sheet, the account? Well, increase an in asset and increase an in equity. Is this the answer? Well, let's think about it. What happened to the company when they received 20,000 in cash? When the company receives $20,000 in cash, yes, we're going to increase the asset of the company. Hold on a second. Would that also increase equity? Yes. If the company received $20,000 in cash, asset goes up and as a result, equity goes up as well. I would say A is a good answer choice, but let's look at the other ones. B. Increase in liabilities. Well, if the company receiving cash, if they're issuing stocks and receiving cash, will their liabilities go up? They're, no, absolutely not. They don't owe anything. When you give common stock, you are giving stocks to owners of the company. They don't expect to be paid. These individuals are the owners. They're, they are taking risk. So they're not really debtors. They're not really creditors. They're the owners of the company. Therefore, B is out. Increase in asset, right? That's correct. And decrease in liabilities. With the liability, with the debt of the company goes down if someone contributed money to the company. And the answer is no. Because the owner, they gave money, they gave money to the company, and they get common stock in return. The company's liabilities did not decrease, did not go down. Therefore, C is increase in asset, yes. Decrease in liability is wrong. C is out. Decrease in asset, absolutely not. Because... The company received cash. Cash is an asset. Asset went up. Asset did not go down. So what should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional multiple choice, additional resources. That's going to help you. Additional lectures, additional exercises help you understand the accounting equation. How does it work? FarhatLectures.com is always here to help. Invest in yourself. Your education is important. This is the found this is a foundation chapter for financial accounting. Good luck, study hard, and of course stay safe.